I decided to make this uh, video to illustrate one way of restuffing these cans uh, containing uh, multiple filter capacitors on tube or valve radios. This particular one is a Saba Freiburg W2 from 1952. I have determined that the filter cans are indeed uh, not working correctly. They've dried out. The, um, the hum is quite discernible. So I decided to go about this and um, show you how I do it in this particular type of capacitor. The method depends on the type of capacitor casing. This particular one has a threaded version, threaded um, connector. So it is certainly a little easier to open up and remove. There's a trade-off between how cleanly you get the stuff out of the cap and uh, how much time you take to do it. This is certainly pretty time-consuming, so um, don't expect to get this done in a few minutes. You're probably looking at uh, about an hour to do the whole procedure. You do have to bear in mind that some of the damage that you do will be hidden when the cap is uh, reinserted into the, uh, into the radio. What you're seeing here, that trim at the bottom is actually underneath the capacitor when it's uh, bolted down to the chassis. So in all likelihood you will not see that. But here we have it. The thread and casing is now open. You can see this capacitor material. And these uh, caps used in the Saba radios have one advantage. Uh, generally they have this plastic hole at the top, which uh, makes it easier to push out the stuffing. Many people have uh, shown examples of uh, using heat to melt it and pop it out. That is certainly necessary with some of the older caps, but not on these. You can literally push them out without damaging the casing at all. Here we have it. Everything comes out. You're left with a bit of gunk at the bottom. And uh, now all that remains is for a cleanup and, uh, and it's ready to restuff. A little bit of uh, washing up liquid and uh, a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and you have a clean result. I try not to scrub the casing too much so that the uh, markings don't come off the capacitors. I prefer to keep them in place. Um, it just adds to the authenticity. Now I drill 
holes where the tags are um, to get a wire through. It's uh, best to use a Dremel or a similar tool and um, make a small one millimeter hole right through to the other side. Two small holes on the tags themselves will allow me to fix the wires coming through those uh, drilled holes a lot better. I then join the capacitors. These two are two 47 microfarad 400 volt capacitors to replace the two 50 microfarads. Um, the original ones are under 300 volts. I join the two negatives together and the two positives are ready to fit through the holes that I've drilled. Because um, they're a little short and I don't want to create any shorting um, in the inside uh, when I push the capacitors in, I prefer to put in longer leads with uh, a twisted thread on one end which helps to solder later. If you use this technique to add extension uh, wires, you end up with a very easy connection to solder. And um, this was actually used uh, originally in the old days to do repairs, um, it made it easier to solder the components in place and resulted in a very clean solder joint, very solid and uh, very easy to remove actually if you decide to do so later.
Before you go ahead and uh, close the can up, it's always advisable to test the capacitors just to ensure that you have uh, good connections and that the capacitors are fine. You certainly don't want to open it up again if you made a mistake. These measure 42.8 and uh, on the first one and remember they're replacing 50 microfarads but I wouldn't trust the capacitor meter too much. I believe these are fine. The negative is the common negative that's uh, coming out in that little tag over there and this will make contact with the case itself which becomes the negative. Now comes a tricky bit. You have to fold back the edges of the can and um, this can be quite a mess if you don't do it carefully. The best way to go about it uh, depends on what you have on hand but if you push them gently or as gently as you can and then a little bit of hammering, a little bit of filing, the result should be fine. Then it's just a matter of putting it back into the case, tightening the nut on the inside. Don't forget that on the outside of the chassis there's an insulation. This can does not touch the case, so beware that you leave the insulation in place. Then solder in the connections to the two pins. It's not particularly important which ones you do here because both capacitors are in fact the same value. Otherwise you'd have to remember which capacitor goes to which contact. Make sure you have a good solder joint in place on both uh, capacitor connections and away you go. That's it. That's done. And the two caps are new.